How can you turn your competition into a referral source? Find out in today's interview with Scott Parker from Parker Landscape Design. Plus, find out which of Scott's pets escaped from his dorm in college and, and what, what it ate. It's pretty scary. Find out in the episode. We weren't getting the leads that I knew we could. We weren't getting the right leads. What started happening is that our, our leads are more qualified. Our sales have probably gone up by about 10 to 15% a year. We're going to increase our sales volume by a million dollars in a year. Hey everyone, Jack Joss is here and welcome to the Landscaper's Guide. This show is all about sales and marketing to help you grow your snow and landscape company. Now today we just finished a video shoot with one of my clients, Scott Parker. And while I was here we had an incredible time and learned some hilarious stories as well as some of the things that have made Scott successful. So I'm excited to share that with you in today's episode. If you're new here and you haven't yet subscribed, make sure you do at landscapersguide.com slash podcasts. See a link in the show notes. And when you subscribe, I will send you our top three sales and marketing podcasts to help you grow your business right away. Now let's get into today's conversation with Scott Parker. All right, everyone, welcome back to the Landscaper's Guide podcast. Today, I'm here with my client, Scott Parker from Parker Landscape Design. He flew out from New Jersey to do some videos. We just shot five videos you told me some hilarious snake stories yeah. that we're gonna get to. And before we do, um, I want one of the things that we did while we were here was we branded, we titled the Parker Family Promise. And I really believe that this is one of the things that really sets you apart from any of your competition. What is the Parker Family Promise? So we, we guarantee a phone call back, same day. In, unless it just, you know, is uh, too late at night, but, um, Someone calls us, even if they're a client that was 10 years old, we will get back to them the same day. Nice, I like that. And um, tell me, a little, tell us a little bit about your family history. So you're a third generation landscape professional. Your family had a nursery. Tell yeah. us just a little bit about Yeah, so that. my grandfather started a nursery in 1948 in mm -hmm. Scotch Plains, New Jersey. They were growers mm -hmm. and then they couldn't really make money doing that anymore. So they opened, they became more of a retail and wholesale garden center, and then they started to do landscape work out of that facility. And, and then eventually that grew into landscape services, and did they have a 24-hour call? Like, did you learn this from your parents? No, about no people but I, I do remember my father saying, if you return calls and you do what you're supposed to do, mm -hmm. you can make a very good living in construction. And I remember at first thinking, well, duh, of course, but um, a lot of people don't do that. And the feedback we get all the time is, oh, you're the only person that called us back. You know, you're the only person that showed up on time, right. said you're going to do what you're, you know. It, it's it's you know. the basics, you know. So we went out for dinner with Robert, yeah. and we, we talked about this. It's kind of like do, showing up and doing the basics and so. working hard every day. It's not that hard <laughs> to be successful if you show up, call people back, and do what you it's say. Probably that probably uh, pertains to any industry. I think but it does, especially construction, because yeah. so many people have such bad experiences. So, well, well, for sure. So I appreciate that you have that. And one of the things, so we had an incredible dinner. We went to Brasserie 1010 in Boulder, Phenomenal. which um, I haven't been to in like three or four years. I think it closed during the pandemic oh, wow. and. Anyways, it's back open. That was an incredible meal. It was delicious. Honestly, it was so much fun. And one of the silliest things that I learned was about your snake, <laughs> your pet snake in college. So I wanted to have you on the podcast. Normally we talk about sales and marketing stuff, but um, so Scott, tell us about your snake in college. So for anyone not familiar, uh, Burmese pythons are being hunted in the Everglades of Florida because they're invasive and they're causing a lot of damage. So I had two of them, a brown regular one and a, a yellow albino one. And I'm in my fraternity house in New Orleans. And I woke up and I had two clips on the top of the tank and a huge rock to make sure they didn't escape. And the tank was ever so slightly open. And wow. one of the two snakes, they were probably about eight foot each, escaped. And it wasn't <laughs> until about almost a year later I'm on the phone with my mother, and I hear across the fraternity cursing, and uh, my 
buddy saying, get the blank into my room. My mother heard it. I said, mom, she just said, what's going on? I said, let me call you back. <laughs> Went into the room. True story. My snake was coming out of a hole in the wall. Uh -huh. Fraternity house was nasty. We had rodents everywhere and, and cockroaches. So the snake was very happy. It was part of the body was coming out of the wall, up his, vertically up his bedpost, and the head of the snake was under his sheets. Wow. And my snake was probably 25% larger than when I lost it. <laughs> so <laughs> so that's uh, one of a couple snake stories. And now I'm banned. My wife told me if I bring a snake home, uh, she'll divorce me. Well, yeah. Denise is an incredible woman, but she will not tolerate any snakes, no. which is fair, yeah. I think, especially after you let one loose in the dormitory. Yep. Um, I have one more story that kind of goes along with this. Okay. In New Orleans, the snakes like a lot of heat, and we used to take these two specific snakes outside, get big planks of, of uh, plywood, mm -hmm. and buy a ton of rats, and we used to bet on which snake would eat more rats faster. So kind of wow. interesting Gross. snake stories. Awesome. <laughs> Well, this conversation with Scott has been ridiculous and hilarious. I really enjoyed meeting him. He's about to share some wisdom around relationships and how to view competition in a way that can help you grow your company. So stay tuned for that. And before we get to that, I want to invite you to join me on Thursday, March 9th for Win the Spring. It's our half-day virtual workshop focused on helping you automate your sales process so you close deals faster and ultimately you're easier to work with than your competitors. How to retain employees by communicating with them, even when you have a ton of crews, a ton of different people, how do you keep in touch with each individual person in a, in a leveraged way without stressing out your managers? And how can you procure plants and materials faster and more efficiently? Check out winthespring.com for more information. Well, Scott, thanks so much for coming out to Colorado and doing the videos with us. I'm curious, what, you know, you've been in business a long time, you've built a successful company. What would your sales tip be for other landscapers who are watching? If you could get them to do maybe one thing that you've figured out over the last 20 years that works, that you do every time, what, do you, what, what works? Don't be stubborn. Learn from your competition. You can learn what not to do and learn what to do. And throughout all the years, I've taken little tidbits of uh, um, advice from employees, from vendors, and uh, kind of pieced it all together. And another thing, we've had some employees that did not work out and were, were not good employees. But even with those bad employees, we learn sometimes, you know, one or two good or bad things not to do. So... Don't be pig at it. Even if someone has been doing this a long time, don't have an ego, continue to learn. And the last thing, you could also make money working with your competition. So instead of looking at your competition as competition, you could, you know, there's a lot of different synergies that you could align your, you know, align with a competitor so you could both make money. What are, so what are some of the ways that you've done that in, over the years? Um, so we're, we're not a big company and there's services that another one of our competitors might offer that we might not or vice versa. So sometimes a competitor that's not in our geographic area mm -hmm. or performs different services, we will refer them and they will refer us and we get free business out of it and as, as well as they do. Uh -huh. Um, so that's probably the biggest thing, um, you might get a great lead in a county or an area of your state that you know you don't service. Instead of throwing it away, you know, make some money off it. You know, by referring. So, do you get a commission from? We'll do one of two things. We'll either do straight referral. Mm -hmm. You refer me, I refer you, or we'll give a small commission. You know, on a yeah. referral, and they will do the same for us. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. So, Scott, um, do, do you know any people who aren't a, a competitor to? Parker Landscape Design that we should send this podcast to? A ton. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 All right. Good. Well, so I'll send you a link yeah. and now you'll have something to send them. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Deal? Sure. Cool. Well, anyways, hey, it's been really fun working with you, Scott. Exactly. Thanks Thank for coming so to Colorado yeah. and Thank thanks for so sharing. Yeah. What was the name of that snake that escaped, by the way? 
Burmese python. No, no. Do they have names? Did it have a name? I don't think I ever named them, which no. sounds weird, but yeah. they probably had names, but I was in college. I might have been too drunk to remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, got it. Cool. Well, hey, yeah. thanks so much. And uh, everyone, um, remember to feed your snake and don't let it loose. And uh, check out our uh, other podcast episodes. Sign up. Make sure you don't miss the podcast and we'll send you some that are more focused on sales marketing and leadership right when you sign up at landscapersguide.com slash podcast and uh scott thanks again thanks yeah i hope to have Appreciate you back yep. thank you i'll definitely be back well that was really fun i enjoyed working with scott we recorded some videos that he's going to put on his website one of the cool things that we did was a a, a portfolio showcase video where we told the stories of some of the projects that he worked on, like this cool outdoor lighting project for a historic property from the 1800s. We talked about one of his client's outdoor living spaces and we showcased Scott's home. And that was a really cool thing just to talk with Scott and see how he designed his, his backyard and why he chose the plants that he did and all the cool blue stone. I didn't realize that blue stone had such a variety of colors. So um, it was really fun, really enjoy working with the snow and landscape industry because I get to work directly with people like Scott who are fun and interesting and run great businesses. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode and my name's Jack Jostis. I look forward to talking with you next week on the Landscaper's Guide. Mm -hmm.